but you need to know. And they ultimately agreed with that. And did previously, uh, when Betty Montgomery was the treasurer, treasurer did it fall under her? She was actually auditor. Uh, was Jeanette auditor. Bradley was oh, the sorry. treasurer, yeah. and, and before that, Joe Dieters, and before that, Ken Blackwell. And you know, there were different things that happened along the way. Um, you know, I, I can't characterize exactly how each of them played their role, but um, what happened is that over time, that custodial role changed and became a little more complicated. Twenty years ago, it was easy because people invested and they got actual tangible you know, bonds or stock certificates or whatever, and we kept them in the treasury vault. And so it was kind of physical, it was a physical act of having custody of the assets. Uh, over time, all that's become electronic and it's all on computer screens and, and you have QCIP numbers, but you don't actually have physical assets. So I told them my view of the custodial function was I had to have the kind of information made available to me in real time that was similar to actually having a tangible asset and therefore knowing that it was there and what it was, and that it was you know within proper policies and procedures, and that's that's where we had to have those discussions because it isn't entirely clear from the code, uh, and we ultimately got into a lot of legal issues. We ultimately got those worked out. I, I'm not. I, my point is, I'm not uh, um, consciously being critical of predecessors here. It's a it's an evolving function that I think has become difficult to understand, but I had a view of what I thought it should be and we've insisted that that be the way it is. And hopefully it will continue that way under future treasures. If I understand what the Attorney General does in relation to uh, prosecutors, he, he's not, he does not delve a lot into criminal law unless requested by the governor, is that correct? That, that is correct. The, um, in, in this state, most of the Midwestern states under the state constitution, law enforcement is done at the local level. You know, you'll have county prosecutors, you have county sheriffs, uh, and you have in many municipalities police departments. Some townships have police departments. They're the ones who actually uh, investigate crime, uh, arrest people, lock them up, hold them for trial. The prosecutors prosecute their cases, and, and you know, they're the ones who put them behind bars, if you will. The Attorney General's office doesn't do any of that in the first instance. What they do now is we have BCI, which is essentially a resource that, in, that can help with investigations when asked. We don't have the authority to go in on our own. We don't, we're not a state police force. And we have labs that are increasingly relevant and maybe even essential to local law enforcement. We don't have the same resources. So, you know, in a lot of these cases now, you're going to take evidence on the scene and you're going to want it analyzed, you're going to want blood evidence analyzed. Fingerprints have always been a big role for BCI. Uh, and now DNA increasingly is critical in these cases. The BCI lab does a lot of that work for local uh, law enforcement and gets it done and gets it back to them and they use it in their trials. That work from what I hear around the state, and I've talked to a lot of uh, law enforcement folks around the state during this campaign, uh, is typically done pretty well. It's not always done timely. And if it's not done timely, then people are sitting in jail waiting for trials. Uh, and the trial, the evidence can become stale and it can hurt their ability to prosecute crime. So that's one thing I will be watching and looking out for. The Attorney General also plays a role in keeping criminals who are behind bars, been put there by the local law enforcement, keeping them behind bars. All the federal habeas corpus where they challenge their sentence or their trial in federal court, where they get a separate review, most high profiles in death penalty cases, those cases are all handled through the Attorney General's office. That's, that's what I did as state solicitor. I did a lot of things, but we handled, uh, I oversaw the federal habeas corpus. We did not have at that time a capital crimes unit. Betty Montgomery created one later. Uh, but all those cases came through the state solicitor's office because they were going to the appeals courts and the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, we also made it a point, I made it a point to create what we called the criminal law project when prosecutors had cases in the Ohio Supreme Court that went up there on appeal. They try cases all the time in trial court, but they aren't necessarily used to going before the Ohio Supreme Court. It might be an unusual thing, a rare thing, especially for smaller counties. And so we would brief the cases and stand alongside them and argue to shore them up uh, before the Ohio Supreme Court. That has not been done in a consistent way since, but we will reinstitute that if I'm Attorney General. So in those ways, I think you're, you're very helpful and relevant to law enforcement, but you are not the person who prosecutes a case. It's, it's kind of like people will ask me about the treasurer's office. Often people will say to me, uh oh, are you a CPA? Because they see that as a financial credential. It's totally irrelevant to the treasurer's office. I mean, 
it's helpful, it's not irrelevant, but uh, it's very relevant to the auditor's office, but that's a somewhat different function doing the actual audits. My office, banking and economic experience, is a little more relevant. Similarly, the attorney general, a good prosecutor is a good prosecutor, and they do something every day, which is try cases, establish facts, deal with juries. The attorney general's office does very little of that in the criminal area, and it's, it's been a misleading thing about campaigns for years, because what sells is I'm, you know, I'm going to put criminals behind bars, but that isn't really what the attorney general does most of the time. They're enforcing civil laws most of the way they do. One of the things being said, you're a Democrat, and your predecessor was a Democrat. And That's correct. They, uh, it's sort of like who's minding the store, because the same party, they'll, they'll cover up the sins of the, of the predecessor being of the same party. How do you respond to that? Well, we've seen, we see that problem on both sides of the aisle from time to time, so it's not unique to one party or the other. But I guess what I would 